What's up, Steeler Nation? And welcome back to another episode of Bud Brother Buddy. And today, I have a very, very special guest again, like no other, the Mustang himself attended the University of Notre Dame, a beast on the field, a beast off the field, no other than Mr. Stephon to it. What up? <laughs> Bro, my dog to it, man. Appreciate you for coming, man. The big man himself. Glad to be a part of it. Glad to be a part of it. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Man, thank you for coming on today. Uh, obviously, the name of the show is Bud Brought a Buddy. Okay. And today, I brought my buddy, Stephon to it. And uh, man, do it to it. Just a little background. He is a phenomenal athlete, super athletic, ready to do everything you want to do. So much passion in the game. He just loves it. And it shows up all the time, baby. That's the most compliments I probably ever got in my whole entire life. Oh, for real? For real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we gonna keep on going. We gonna boost you up over here, baby. That's what we do. <laughs> All right, man. The name of the show, Bud, brother, buddy. So I'm starting off every episode of Who is your best bud? Okay. Who is my best bud? It's hard. I got a couple. I don't think I just got one. Yeah. Um, my wife. For sure. First my boys. Foremost. My my kids that I have. Yep. I got a good friend of mine, Johnny and Ted and Denzel, mm. and uh, of course my teammates on the team. For sure. I kind of put them all in the same circle. They all give me something unique about their uh, situation. Uh huh. You know, each one of them give me something that I like that I uh -huh. like to have around me. And yeah. It's just hard to say one, but I think I'd be wrong if I said my lady wasn't my nah, best sure. bud. You know the rock. Mean? Yeah, because she know me more than anybody. Nah, I didn't. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh huh. So who is your most influential bud? Influential, man. Right now, you influential. You got the whole stillest like recording your stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> like this is crazy. Like, you got a real life show. <laughs> Bud, <laughs> brother, buddy. Is this not Still influential or what? It. Like this, this is influential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it, man. You know how we Where do. you from again? <laughs> Where you from? No real talk. Where you hey, from? You know it, man. Where you, you from? See, we got it. You from the south part of Georgia. How many people right now got a show right now? Hold That's on, hold crazy. on. Let me clap. Let me clap for myself. <laughs> Good up, boy. Pat on the back. Down south Georgia, boy, man. <laughs> Down south Georgia, boy. So, obviously, we had Cam on here before you. Oh, man. And you've been talking to town, man. Uh, oh. We know you got uh, a, a hidden trait. That a lot of people probably don't know. And what is it? A, a hidden hobby. A lot of people probably don't know, and that's cooking. I do so love to cook. So explain the passion that you have for cooking. Man, it, it, cooking is it, universal. It's mm -hmm. universal. It brings a lot of people together. Um, you can easily go to a nice restaurant and sit down and have, you know, chefs that got Michelin stars cook you a wonderful, phenomenal meal. But at the same time, it's a different, like authentic take from it when you and the people you have invited into your home are participate in a dinner, and y'all sit down, and break bread, and drink wine, and just have a good time together. That's what I enjoy doing the most. So I enjoy like having different type of friends from all different type of ethnic groups join me, mm -hmm. so I can get a chance to like taste their food, taste what they doing, you know, like Indian, uh, Italian, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know, of course American. I, I didn't get a chance to do Chinese yet. I don't got yeah. a Chinese friend, so hopefully I get that opportunity after this show. Maybe you want to hit me up, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> make, make sure. <laughs> make sure you do. So you, you take pride in tasting other cultural food to, to, to put it into your own style. Yeah, like a little twist. Mm -hmm. Like um, when, I, when all this is said and done, hopefully I get a chance to like um, open up a little restaurant mm -hmm. and start slow. Um, probably would have started with a food truck. But then after that, eventually, you know, probably try to attack, like getting some Michelin stars or something. But that's, the that, that's just, yeah, that's just, but that's just, that's further way down the line. But I, I really enjoy being in the kitchen. Um, it's just like how you run any program or organization, you know, mm -hmm. you just, everybody got a certain thing that they have to do. And so. uh, if it's not done right, uh, everything can fall, everything can fail. So um, putting food, making people happy, making people come together, that's, that's, that's what I like to do. That's dope, man. And then the other thing too, man, Tua definitely can cook. His food is definitely phenomenal. So when you get that restaurant open up, I'm definitely pulling up. Oh, it's gonna be popping. Yeah, I'm <laughs> it's up. gonna be popping. The best of the best. I'm definitely coming. Well, I said, one thing I said I'm gonna do with that, I said, I'm gonna travel around the world 
and the 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 one thing I want to do at my restaurant compared to different type of restaurants mm -hmm. is that I want to just want to bring a piece of piece of the whole world to my restaurant. To the one restaurant. And you know what I mean? I'm not holding back. One stop you know what shop. I mean? Like I'm making this like you're not just pulling up here just wearing no rinker dink clothes either. For like sure. you most definitely pulling up here like you going to go out like yeah you pulling up. Bentley, Cullinan, I don't care what you got. Yes. Red carpet coming in. Yes. Nice. That's dope, nice. man. Nice. I'm excited. I'm excited for it. I know you're going to make it wild. <laughs> I'm excited. So, for what in your life right now do you feel most grateful for? To be an American. Mm -hmm. To be where I'm at sitting down right now talking. To have a healthy family. To be able to, you know, play, do my dream job right now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Have an opportunity just to wake up every single day because I think a lot of people take that for granted. I for think sure. a lot of people don't understand like how hard it is out here for a lot of people to wake up. So um, true. That's definitely one. No different. So, what is the first thing when you walk in the room and you see a person? What's the first thing you notice about someone? They facial expression. They let me know right away like what I'm in, like what type of what type of scene what it is. What type? <laughs> <laughs> They're like what type of vibe I know about right to be? now, like through your body language. Is it time to go or I could stay? I could be cool. Yeah. I could just tell. I think facial expressions tells it all. I think at the end of the day, I think people do a, I think some people do a good job of hiding their facial expression. You know what I mean? They do. You know, they got all these stuff out here in the world that could try to, you know, make you look like you're always happy. But no, nah, I think if you can look at somebody long enough, they could tell you if this if this place vibing or not vibing. Yeah. Yeah. Would you rather be ugly and live forever or attractive and, and die in a year? Man, I'm already doing what I do best. I'm just gonna be ugly and live forever. Like what you? <laughs> I'm doing what I do best. I'm oh, oh, good. I'm oh, good. Oh, I am. I'm not gonna die a year. Too much stuff to see out there. I don't know. What, I don't know how other people think, but I don't, you know, DBs. You know, they into their looks. So you probably ask a lot of DBs this question. They yeah, probably, they definitely. They, they most definitely taking a sacrifice yeah, for a year. You know, I, that's think, just I, how I, I live my best life squinting. They want to take. They want to squint. Mm. Mm, mm, that's what they do all the time. That's what they want to do. Just like <laughs> danger, danger. Joe Hayden, <laughs> oh, Steve, all, all of them. That's Those what they all do. Uh, squint their eyes. Hey. Chico, <laughs> Drake. I thought they had eye problems until I got a chance to know them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, y'all say DB? Like, y'all You get, you all right? Yeah. <laughs> why, why would the camera come out and you start squinting? Most definitely. I'll be like, man, I don't know if I want, I don't know if I want to go in the field with that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you see the interception, boy. Man, describe to Still a Nation your take on life and what does it mean to you? Oh, man, life is beautiful. You only have one to live. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people say that, and I think a lot of people just let that go through one ear and go out the other. Life is beautiful. There's so much in the world, so much culture in the world, so much different type of people in the world. There's no way you could be bored. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, you don't need to have a lot to live life. And I've been to a couple, I've been to one country before um, in Honduras with E, Emil, who's behind the cameras right now. You know, we, I think we live in a country where we extremely blessed to live in. Mm -hmm. You live in a country where each individual have an opportunity to make something for themselves. You know, you put your pride and ego aside that there was m tremendous opportunity for you. Yeah. And you just, you got an opportunity to get a chance to go to different countries and see these people that's happy with the things that they have, the type of family that they have, the type of things that bring them joy, how they open up their arms and bring a stranger in and make you feel as if you're part of that family. You know so, what I'm saying? And speaking speaking on, on, on that, uh, you did a couple of surgeries too as well in Honduras, right? I was uh, in, you I was, was in nah, on you didn't something. do it, but you yeah. was in on them. Yeah, I was in on something. And to see those people after surgery and the, and the way they look. Man, that was happy. The, the way Man. I was explaining to you. I remember this lady, she had, she had a broken leg for, I want to say, 13 to 15 years, I think. You know you know what that's like? Just you know what I mean? Around. Like, when you break your leg here, you know how easy it is to go to a hospital yeah. and just get it fixed? She's still trying to get up and try to go to work, but you can't. You know, you can't. You can't. You, she, 13, 15 years of breaking that leg, she wasn't able to produce for her family. And in that type of economy, 
you know, yeah. it's, you know, people can't live. She got an opportunity to get, you know, to get worked on by these doctors that volunteer their time from this country. When she got out of that, <laughs> when she woke up from her anesthesia, and she was so happy. Like, you know what I mean? Like to get out of that chair knowing that she just got worked on and knowing that she could walk again. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying? And provide for her family, you yeah. know? So blessing, man. Sometimes we take stuff for granted being over here. Oh but yeah. We gotta travel the world and to take a step back sometime and, and just put that in perspective that everybody's not as blessed as we are over here. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I've been to Ethiopia too, so I, I kind of like, yeah. I saw people walking on their, walking on all fours, humans. Yeah. Walking on all fours, mm -hmm. like dogs. So, man, it kind of like changed your mind about just trying to like live life. And the thing that we that we get mad about, yeah. Like, come on, like it's small. And, yeah. But yeah, man, so uh, thank you for sharing that with us for real. And uh, Appreciate that's, that. that's real dope, man. Yeah. All right, so if you could personally witness an event that took place in the world any time of your life or any before your life, or any time it has happened, what event would you want to witness? You know, that's a great question. But if I could go back in time and look at an event, I think I'd look at my event. Mm. I would. I'd go back and look at I didn't start playing football to high school. Mm -hmm. So I like I would love to go back and like rewatch my life. Yeah. Cause I didn't I didn't I didn't play football till I got to ninth grade. So and the only reason why I played football in, in ninth grade because I disobeyed my mom. My mom told me I couldn't go nowhere because I had to watch my brothers. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I was like the man of the house a little bit. So if I went to school, like nobody was going to watch. I had yeah. two brothers at the time. So me, you know, that high school schedule, like you come home, you leave early, but you come home early. So you, you kind of be home for your brothers to get off the bus and like sure. all that. So I've been doing that for a while, but, you know, I really wanted to play football. I really wanted to get an opportunity to, uh, you know, live a dream and try to change my family. So I remember asking her Monday, I think it was like Monday or Tuesday, I was like, I'm trying, I want to try out for the football team. And then she, and she go, uh, who gonna take you there? <laughs> like, why, they, why, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why they always, why do, when I, and I mean, I, I don't listen. When I say they, I mean uh, black moms. What is the real? Why do you always say that? Uh, who gonna take? Who gonna go buy? Who gonna buy? Who gonna take? Who gonna buy? Oh man! <laughs> so we do. I mean, she had like I just was like, man, she had me there. <laughs> <laughs> she, she did have me there. She did. But I told her I, I, I really wanted to do it. I just like I tell you, like growing up in my family. I really, I really had no other choice but to try to make it, you so, know, because um, we were just part of a system that just would have been repeated over, over and, over. and over and over again. And I always wanted to go back and be like, what was that moment for me to be always to like pay attention a little for bit sure. more than the average person my age would? Like, why was I able to look at something a little differently than somebody else who's my age at that moment would look at it? And I think that's only because of my maturity level at the time and how it had to be forced to be a little bit older yeah. than what it needed to be. Uh, that's great, man. Yeah. Now, nah, so for the last <laughs> question, man, all right, to it, uh, in closing, man, you know, you've been, you accomplished a lot, many goals in your life right now. You've been in a situation that many people couldn't get out of. Uh, we could, we continue to grow. We're only getting better and better at life, not only in, in football, but at life and being a man as well. Yeah. It's each and every day we're continuing to grow at that. Uh -huh. So what would you tell your 18-year-old self if you can travel back in time and just tell them something different right now? Man, I would've told him nothing different. I'd just tell him, keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep your head down, keep going. You're doing the right thing. Growing up how I grew up, and growing up in the environment that I grew up, I got a chance to just be involved. Football helped me be involved in all sort of things, you know? Mm -hmm. And if I didn't take that chance to disobey my mother, because you know, I walked 11 miles to my first practice. So, you know, if I go back and look at, like, if I didn't decide to do that walk, that 11 mile walk, I would've be sitting here. I don't know if I'd be sitting here right nah, now talking sure. to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it happened. I walked 11 miles. From that moment on, like, it brought me to Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. and it brought me to Pittsburgh Steelers. Yep. I got a wife, I got kids, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And it's all because of 11 mile walk. The attitude I had was, I'm just gonna continue to better myself. I'm gonna continue to improve my character. I'm gonna continue to improve myself 
educationally, I'm gonna continue to prove myself football-wise too. And football was doing that for me. Football was like my saving grace for a lot of things. So that's why I really respect the game of football. I would tell my 18 year old self, don't quit, just keep, keep moving forward. That's dope, man. Yeah. Yeah, y'all heard it, man, from the cow's mouth, mouth himself. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to change it, man. Uh, <clears throat> but to it, man, once again, I want to appreciate you for coming on, Bud, brother, buddy. Most definitely. Uh, it was a great conversation. Uh, hopefully, the fans got to know you uh, better than they did before. Yep. And, uh, man, we got to This is a great show you're doing, I'm we telling have to you. We're to get it back on again, good. man. This is good. I'm letting everybody know this is good. This is great interaction for people to see, man. And sure. we got it. I'm glad a lot of people are tuning in to this. This is yeah. great. The great real interaction. You know what I'm saying? Like the this real. is awesome. This is awesome. Man, still a nation once again, man. This is Bud I brought a buddy. And uh thank you for tuning in. I brought today I brought my buddy Stefan to it. And uh see you guys next week.